Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. So yesterday we did get our first official introduction to concrete examples and stats of these champion attributes that Kabam was warning us about. And uh, putting the unexpected scores and controversial scores I'll say aside, they actually added some more champions since yesterday. And uh, so we went through them kind of yesterday, but obviously me being me, automatically saw an Excel spreadsheet forming in front of my eyes. And that is exactly at what we are looking here. Now, I will not include a link to the spreadsheet for now, but uh, I do have expectation that Kabam is going to keep adding these champions, and I do plan to make this available for everyone once I have put in some more work to it. And perhaps in future also offer alternative version to Kabam's overlord thoughts, as in this is what Kabam thinks, this is what KT1 thinks about these ratings. I do not plan to discontinue my tier list, uh, and the tier list updates actually going to be coming out uh, in the next few days as well, because we do have you know a couple more champions to talk about there. But I do feel that putting champion abilities in flat out five numbers was never going to work, and we already can see very kind of controversial examples of that. As an instance, Doctor Doom scoring three in damage. Did he really? He really? Again, did they really give Doom three in damage? They're really good. Son of a bitch, I did. Anyways, just again, again, perfect example. So Dr. Doom scores three in damage, whilst we have a gun whose damage is utterly shit in any short fight and amazing in long fight. There is just not enough nuance. There's just not enough nuance because it's all that matters where you use this champion, when you use this champion, how you use this champion. So I don't think that without a ton of added extra detail to these stats that can ever tell a true and accurate story. Not to mention simple things like not all piece of utility weigh the same. Uh, you know, one ability might be 10 times more potent than another. And lastly, champion doesn't need to have, you know, insane amount of utility score of five. A great example that everybody always keeps going back, and it's one of my favorite examples as well, is, you know, Ronan. Ronan would probably score one in survivability, or two maybe. One or two in damage in an average fight. Ease of use, sure, why not, super simple, five. Utility, probably one or two. You know, defender strike one, and he would be the worst champion on this list. Fact of the matter is, when you need somebody like Ronan, He's by far the best champion, the best option, and he's borderline irreplaceable. All of those things matter much more than some arbitrary numbers. So it's important that we do not put too much weight and faith in these. Unfortunately, if you are a more experienced player, you will know that. But if you are a newer player that's not actively involved in community, you are likely going to end up blindly following Kabam's numbers, looking for the highest grades and highest scores, and... Uh, you know, missing, sleeping, and ignoring a ton of useful champions. And that's why, you know, again, I do not think this was a needed thing or a great idea. I do understand that it could help out in situations, some players, but I just, again, don't, don't. That put aside, let's actually break down what Kabam overlords think about our champions, shall we? We have about 27 of them listed here. And uh, let's take a look. So the most survivability, we have Omega Red, Black Widow, Clairvoyant, Guardian, Thing, and Sorcerer Supreme. Those, those have the most survivability and least one is Human Torch. CGR, Black Eye, and Sunspot are at the bottom. Again, you see, I would argue that Sunspot with perfect blocks and, you know, decent block proficiency has way more survivability than uh, She-Hulk, for instance. Right, Corus somehow gets only three, even though he's a massive A potion server. B, if you run Liquid Courage, double edge heals himself. Warlock has been done the dirtiest, I think, because according to them, Warlock is an excellently average character. I think Warlock overall has the lowest score, or one of the top bottom five scores. Quake has the lowest score. Overall, when you put total, Quake has the lowest score, to what Kabam gives out. And then the second lowest, I guess, is She-Hulk, or shares that. And Sorcerer Supreme is down there at the bottom, too. You know, it's quite quite fascinating when you put it like that. 
And obviously, so what I did is I filled all this data in here. And then the first things first, let, let's just jump to the juicy bit. Let's check the overall total winners. And uh, according to Kabam, <laughs> the highest total scores go to Dr. Doom, Nick Fury. I, I can get behind that. And then Guillotine 2099, Strife and Aegon. And I absolutely disagree with that. Because uh, you would want to use neither of those in your general daily content for most part. And that is, again, you know, the lack of detail. There is an absolute lack of detail there. And uh, who are our worst champions? <laughs> Sorcerer Supreme, Quake, and She-Hulk are in the bottom. And then joint, you know, worst scores go to Shang-Chi, Black Cat Thing, Warlock, and CGR somehow. CGR, out of 27 champions that we have ratings for, CGR is fourth worst overall. Right. Obviously, these totals I don't particularly take, take a look at for very specific reasons. These totals is not something that anybody should be taking a look at. Because for most of you, ease of use doesn't matter. If you want to play with the champion, you will. Right? It's simple as that. You know, it took me a while to learn Quake. I did. And I can use it now. It took me a while to learn Ghost. I did. And I can play it fine now. Took me a while, apparently, according to Kabam, to learn Nick Fury, and I did, and I used Nick Fury, or Black Widow, Claire Voyant, or Hyperion, or Kor. It took me a while too. What the? Okay, I need, I need to check this one. Did, did they give ease of use two points to Corvus? Really, ease of use two points to Corvus Glaive. What the? F <laughs> Apparently, it took me a while to learn how to use Corvus Glaive, and I did. The point where I'm getting at is, if you want to use a champion, you will. Will you learn it quicker or slightly longer? You know, in general, it doesn't matter when you actually use the champion. Similarly, defender strength does not matter, you know, if you're going to use it offensively. You do not care what kind of defensive abilities you have, because you do not plan on getting hit in the face too much. Or rely on those. So I made my own top scores that do matter, in my opinion, more when you use a champion. So damage, utility, and survivability. And then I made an additional one, which perhaps is even more important damage and utility. Because when you use a champion, you don't particularly care about survivability either in many cases. Yes, sometimes it comes in handy, but nobody's initial game plan is I'm going to get hit in the face. And if you are confident enough in your abilities, not getting hit in the face, then again, survivability does not matter to get the job done. You know, if you're going to use that champion for the fight, you can, you can either pot up afterwards so long as you get through that fight or, you know, you can use it for a fight or two. So I think this is kind of like more generic offensive total score. And this is more dedicated, specific, just, you know, whether that champion has that offensive one. And similarly, here we have defensive capability and survivability. So let's take a look at those criteria, more importantly, because I do think that these are going to be kind of significantly more important than your generic totals. Because again, ease of use, I can understand why it is there, but it, it, if I could hide it, I would just hide it and it would not appear to me, because I don't care too much how hard it is to use the champion, if it's worth using with the champion. So let's sort it out again. Let's sort it out by damage, utility, and survivability. And then, I'm going to see the top champions here, which are Omega Red, apparently, is the best. Of okay, I can kind of, maybe. Then we have Ghost, Nick Fury, Guillotine 2099, Strife, Aegon, CMM. Again, I do not see CMM is that high up there, but, you know, Kabam seems to be in a very high opinion about the champion that nobody really wants to play with these days. Black Widow, Claire Voyant, and Guardians quite high. Interesting, Cap Infinity War, and then Corvus. But again, for offensive purposes, Doctor Doom is under that, she hulks under that, Colossus, Hyperion, Shang-Chi, Black Cat, Sorcerer Supreme, and Qu even then, even here, Quake scores towards the bottom. Even here, Quake scores towards the bottom. And somehow, Warlock gets one of the worst scores overall. They, they gave Quake, Sorcerer Supreme, Warlock, she hulk the worst total scores. But Warlock has been completely done in. Warlock and CGR, a lot of you will point out, CGR and Human Torch 
are obviously the top tier offensive options for Alliance Wars, for any hard content, and they score the worst here. You know, I, I do not support any system that tells me this. I do think that there is a significant amount of flaws that tells me this. Warlock is one of the most average champions, apparently. Except he's literally one of the best tech champions in the game. But apparently he's just an average trash. Okay. So here we are with these. So interestingly. So let's let's abandon the survivability and let's just focus on damage and utility. Just focus on damage and utility. And Quake is in the bottom <laughs> again. Quake, Warlock, Sorcerer Supreme, Thing, and Symbiote Supreme. When you look at damage and utility, these are the worst champions that Kabam has listed here. Somehow. Somehow. Let's take a look at the best ones. Is Ghost, Nick Fury, Omega Red, Corvus, Black Cat, interesting, Guillotine 2099, Stripe, Aegon, CMM, Cap Infinity War, Domino, Sunspot, CGI. And again, Doctor Doom, <laughs> just uh, somewhere in the middle, Colossus, Shang-Chi, Guardian, Hyperion and Scorpion. And let's take a look at defensive stats. Let's take a look at defensive stats. Something tells me these are going to be quite interesting too. So the best defender of all the listed champions is Thing, then Nick Fury and Doctor Doom, and Black, Black Widow Clairvoyant. They are trying to tell us that Black Widow Clairvoyant is better defender than, just for the sake of example, we're going to go with Warlock again. They're trying to tell us then Black Widow Claire that they're trying to tell us that uh, Black Widow Claire Warrior scores that much higher for defensive use than Domino. Quake is somehow in the middle. And she So here we are. Uh, interesting. Interesting definitely to say the least. Now I don't I don't want to be too in your face kind of about this. Two things here are obviously clear. I do disagree with a crap ton of these rankings personally. And uh, I understand why Kabam would want to do this. I do not understand why this is the way why this is the method, how they're approaching it. Uh even in the big picture, but even in the smaller things, if they're going to add 0.5s, then just score it in out of 10, you know? Why, why do you need to mess with comments? But uh, also, you cannot, you absolutely cannot get rid of new ones. Like here, we have in damage. We have Colossus, damage of 5, and Corvus, a damage of 5, right? But those are two completely different damage types. One of them is going to be good for Legends runs, and one of them maybe not so much. Or compare, especially with Aegon. Like Aegon is genuinely one of the most rubbish champions in short to medium fights, and, and and he gets exactly the same damage score as Corvus does, who's the best champion for short fights, and vice versa. Corvus is one of the worst champion for long fights, but he's still damaged to love that, and uh, you know it is a predicament. Like how do you score a champion like that, and the truth is, no matter how you score it, then the result's going to be misleading because there's a lot of nuance missing. And again, these champions are so much more than just simplified numbers here on one sheet. So I do not know how truthful the sheet can be. Even if I try to do my best thing, even if I accept all the flaws and weaknesses that might mislead newer players and let's say fix it to perfection, there would still be a lot of information lost, which by definition is not something as Kabam, you know, company I'd want to push towards the players because it is, you know, even at the best case scenario, if you get all the right things correct as possible, it's still going to be extremely misleading. It's still going to put a shadow on a ton of champions. 
and uh, I do think it's gonna make a lot of people have a lot of errors in their rank up decisions if they are not actively involved in community and discussing these rank. -ups. That being said, obviously I do want to see where this goes, kind of, to and see whether they can become more accurate. But uh, using something like this as basis for balancing programs is also scary as hell. It truly is. And uh, seeing these initial ratings, again, I just don't have much faith. Not only in the people who are giving these ratings to the champions, but also in the whole project as itself. Because as I said, when you put same score on damage with no distinction in between Aegon and Corvus, you know, you might as well not do it at all. Because those champions are as opposite to each other as it can get. So I don't understand why would you want to do that. But here we are. We're going to play with these sheets. We're going to wait for more champions to be added. And uh, then we're going to be able to finally see which champions Kaban thinks are the strongest champions in the game. Which is quite obvious that, uh, you know, a lot of us are genuinely going to disagree with that. But let me know what you guys think about these ratings and the system in general. And um, hit that like button if you enjoyed today's video. So yeah. Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information about the